everyone, this is Leanna from the SoCal Sound. I am so excited to be talking to Rebel Bucket today about their new album, Earth Worship, as well as a few other things too. So stick around and thanks again for being with the SoCal Sound. Trigonometry.
Dilated in your trance, I was a little baby, shrinking like a flower in the rain. Did I make you mean, or were you always that way? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't turn lemons into lemonade. But I let you know how much you hurt me with a really, really long goodbye. For some lemonade I'd like to talk 
talk about the submarine and the big blue world who got stranded by the sonar. It makes me think about your laser beam. You screamed at me until I played the part. I thought I needed you in every way. I woke up in some pain and I texted you by mistake. Honestly, things are gravy. But could you help me jog my memory? Did I make you mean? Or were you always that way? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't turn lemons into lemonade. But you know how much you hurt me with a really, really long goodbye. For some lemonade Who's to start by the sun machine? If you could have the lights, then our love would never end You were like the American dream Baby, what is I don't know I'm for some lemonade With a real goodbye For real, this is goodbye Some lemonade This has been so much fun. We just had a chance to listen to you guys play three songs. Yes. And one of them from the, or two of them from the new album, and then one of them from the album before that. Mm -hmm. And I just have to say, like, your music is so much fun. It's like, I could see you guys dancing in there, and I was <laughs> dancing in my seat out yeah. here. And it was really fun for me because I had not really heard your mu music before yeah. this. And so to kind of understand how you guys are and the energy and the vibe, I really wanted to just do a deep dive into from the very beginning. Let's go. And let's do it. So it was really fun for me to listen to the first album that you put out after your name, Rebel Bucket. Yes. And it was really cool to be able to listen to that as the very beginning. And I know you had an EP as well. And then moving all the way up to Earth Worship, which mm. is the album you guys have now. And what I noticed is like, first of all, obviously the saxophone and trumpet are huge parts of your sound. Mm -hmm. And do you, I feel like they're almost like their own members of the band. Do you feel like they kind of have their own, like, do you connect with them in a personal way just because I feel like it's like they change so much mm -hmm. from album to album? Yes. And it's like so much fun to kind of hear how you change it up with it yeah, all. Yeah, I love thinking of the instrument as a, as a person. <laughs> Anthropomorphizing. Yeah. Or I mean, I do that with everything. So. Yeah. Do you guys kind of do that with your trumpet and sax? Yeah, I mean, I've actually, I mean, I always we've like named actually my sax doesn't have a name but we I've oh, named yeah. so many like things in my life the, the our our vans have had names and um mm -hmm. I mean yeah you it's it's like I like that sort of pagan approach like everything's <laughs> alive everything everything has, has its a own. spirit and and we got to treat everything and everyone the way we want to be treated and kindly kind of yeah I do that yeah. with my cars and stuff too I always name my cars and they have their own personality yeah so i just thought of that because again it's like in the very first album i felt like the, the way the trumpet and the sax came in was 
you know, really vibrant, very yeah. alive, very, there was a lot going on with it. Okay. And then I think when it got to be the next album, um, Omega La La, I, I could hear there was a little bit more of like a sadness, especially in some of the songs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's just had its own journey and maybe I'm like reading too much into it, but it kind of, at least to me, it seems like there was a lot of that in the music. It's definitely been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> and what were your influences, especially, I was curious about the first album, the mm. Rebel Bucket album. What was your musical influences? Because it seemed like there was just a lot of just fun, vibrant sounds. Mm -hmm. And I was curious kind of what you were, I don't know, what you were listening to, the artists you liked at that time. What were mm. you working with? Wow, this is really <laughs> taking it way back. Yeah. Yes. Well, I remember I have really distinct memories of being in the place I lived in in Boston. I think it was in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and our guitar player during that era, Dave Slininger, our our really good friend from college mm -hmm. at University of Vermont. He like we were living together, and like I think we I walked in from came inside from from somewhere being out. And there was this music like blasting out of his room and we walked in, we were like, what is this? Yes. This is so cool. We've never yes. heard this before. And he was like, oh, this is the Talking Heads. You've never heard this? And we were just like, whoa, like what is this A doing to me? Yeah. yeah. And I really I love that. loved, I really loved that. We checked out the Talking Heads and we're like, oh, this is the, finally we found the way to like describe to people who ask what genre we are. We're like, well, do you know the Talking Heads? And I... Then even to this day, we went, we stopped at a hotel and I don't know, oh, no, it was, it was Waco, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, on our way to here. Oh, yeah. And like the hotel guy was asking what, what music we sounded like. And I totally like sized him up wrong. And I don't know, I made some <laughs> assumptions about what he would be into. Yeah. Probably just like country radio or something. And, and we're like, oh, well, like you heard of the talking heads. And he was like, started, he was just like listing off albums and songs and I was like okay I love that that was what he's talking about well and I can really see that like it, like what you were saying about like just going into his room and like dancing because I you know was watching some of your music videos and stuff too and my initial thought was like they're having so much fun mm. or at least it looks like you guys are having such a great time with the music and just like I don't know like your friendship and stuff too you mm -hmm. and Alex mm -hmm. and I just feel like I could sense that thing of like just being creative being fun and just having a really good time mm -hmm. do you feel like with the different music videos you've done has there been like specific ideas in mind or is it just a general sense of like wanting to be expressive for mm. whatever that song means to you like mm. how like what how do the ideas for your music videos kind of come about i guess because they really are so fun and unique in their own ways and mm. i really love them yeah i mean i think doing music videos has been one of the most exciting parts of having this band and like also biggest learning curves. I think like when I went to the school, I didn't really think, oh, and then you're gonna make music videos or yeah. like we did it, we were like music school nerds and I feel like all the cool bands were art school nerds that then like just picked up a guitar and they're like, oh, and they just like made it look cool. But <laughs> yeah. I just always felt like we were the dorks that like knew all the notes and scales and- We've well, got a uh, giant saxophone, uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah. hard to- <laughs> Um, but then, yeah, making videos, we worked with a lot of our friends and that just made it so fun and oh, yeah. just the biggest, best adventure days of all time. I remember Silly Fathers, that music video, I love it. And we mm -hmm. shot that on Super 8 with a friend, a friend of a friend. And my parents came down from Vermont to New York City to help us, specifically to help us with the video. And my mom like sewed all of these ghost costumes and oh. um, and we made like little sandwiches for everyone the night before. And then my dad like drove us around all day through Times Square yeah. and he was like, you know, oh from Vermont. God. So he was having a great time. And, yeah. and I just remember the end of that day just being so fully exhausted and like filled with just the biggest joy. Yeah. And that feeling is kind of what I think I'm chasing with a lot of this creation. Yeah. Well, and I think it's something we're all chasing, like that feeling of joy. Mm -hmm. And that is something I feel like with your music, you have so much joy in it. And mm. even with some of the later albums, like Sun Machine, and some of the more hard personal stuff that you've been through, Alex has been through and stuff, 
even with that, there's still a lot of joy in that album.、Mm. And I guess I was just curious how you were able to. I don't know, like, did you have to separate it out, or were you kind of able to use those experiences you went through and transform it in a way so that you could find joy even in the really sad parts about it? I think the latter. I mean, that's kind of what life is, right?、Yeah. I think it's、yeah. like it's a frothy mixture of feelings. It's joy and it's sadness <laughs> all the time. And you can't really have one without the other. Yeah. And it's just harder when you're like, A public figure, or obviously with music, it's like we are writing about what we are going through, mm, mm -hmm. and that's harder to. I mean, you, I guess you have to choose like how you want to interpret your feelings in that way.、Mm, and definitely. It, and it seems like you guys did an amazing job. And everything I was reading about that album, and I was, you know, just kind of curious. It's like everyone's like, wow, it's like they really transformed so much into this really joyful album. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, Was it easy for you to be able to do that, like in terms of transforming everything that had happened into more joy in music, or was it a process? How did you do that? That's such a fun question. I really like thank you for hearing、yeah. that and holding that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm like, I, I think really it's been just at the top of my list of like what I want to do in life is, is to kind of spread. Whether it's joy or just, I don't, you know, positivity、yeah. or like just, I, I think I've always kind of figured that if we can do it, then we can kind of prove that it's possible or something、mm -hmm. and, and like empower others to do it too. Yeah. And we get empowered by others who are doing it. And, you know, it's so easy to get bitter right now, especially every like day or week. It seems、it's、like、hard. there's、yeah. some new, like really heavy thing. And, um, Mm -hmm. I go to therapy and do a lot of self care、yeah. and have helpers along the way. And I think I just really sense that that's happening right now in、We、our world. We all need it. We're like doing it together. You know, we're、yeah. comparing notes and we're like, oh, okay, like doing the 12 steps or doing creativity or dance or, you know, art, whatever it takes to, to not get bitter. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think we all discovered that more through the pandemic. Yes. Because I think before the pandemic, it's like we just were kind of rushing around on autopilot.、Mm -hmm. At least that's how I felt. At least I felt a little bit on autopilot. Yeah. Not totally. I think I'm a pretty conscious person, but somewhat I felt on autopilot. And I think we had that major life event for all、mm -hmm. of us.、Mm -hmm. We took time to slow down. And now I think we're all a lot more conscious of how we are. Like living our lives. I hope so, yeah. I hope、definitely. so too. I mean, you know, unfortunately, not everyone's, I think, at that place.、Mm. But I can sense like someone like you and your music and stuff, you guys are connected in terms of like connected to what's going on. And I know that's kind of actually what the new album is about in a way, right? Earth worship.、Mm. It's like, You know, I mean, it has so much to do, I'm sure, with the world and the climate change、yes. and things that are going on. And、yeah. essentially, though, it's like what I got from it was just, again, a sense of like joy within all that and being able to, even though the world is changing and we're trying to figure it all out, finding joy through that. So, I mean, was that. What, what themes were you looking for people to get out of this new album?、Mm. Or were you even thinking that? Or you just were kind of open to whatever people wanted to take from it? Well, right early on in the very beginning of, of creating the album, Alex and I, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, are we doing this?、Mm -hmm. You know, should we do this? And we were like, okay, let's do it. And, but we knew we really wanted to have a focus for the writing. You know, from the very beginning, we wanted、yeah. to like channel it and like put all of our energy into an intention、yeah. place. And I'd been just thinking, you know, so much about worshiping the earth and how、mm -hmm. can we just take better care of,、uh, you know,、take、each other and our、yeah. planet our, that's like our only one that we have. And、um, I've been writing a lot about that with my other project with Cowbells and, and、mm -hmm. um, just with, for my own personal stuff. And, Uh, so, I kind of proposed that as a theme. And I think even early on, we had that. Like, we always do like Dropbox folders for all of how that's how we organize our collaboration.、Mm, and very organized. <laughs> <laughs> it actually really helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, and that was like the name of the Dropbox. And so many steps along the way, we were like, is this really what we, we should call it? You know, is this, is this what it still is? You know, is 
Yeah. Also, just yeah. What are who are we and what what are we representing? Yeah. At this what are time? we exactly? Yeah. And it just kept coming back to like no, that, like that's that's how can we not? You know, that's what's under our feet. Like mm. that's something we just wanted to to do it and and yeah. to call it that and to to see how that calling it that could like expand our practicing that mm. and how we talk about it with each other and um and yeah go down that path like see where it would take us and um and so many of the songs you know it was we wrote it collaboratively and i think alex was dealing with his whole personal mm -hmm. experience of it and i was with mine and so I think it ends up being a lot of it is really a lot of the songs are kind of about relationship. Yeah. And I'm started like going to to Coda Codependence Anonymous um like this past year hmm. with the, doing the 12 steps and um around it's all around healthy relationships. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that's really what we're learning. I'm a big <laughs> fan of uh I don't know, I was just on the way listening to an interview with the guy who wrote Overstory, which I haven't even read actually, which hmm. is funny. I haven't read that. What, a, what it's that? all about the forest, and it's a novel, but it's a fiction, but it's based off of the work of this other. I'm horrible with knowing names and proper nouns, but this other yes. lady who is wrote a book called Finding the Mother Tree, which is mm. all about like the mycelial networks yeah. underneath us, and uh, just all uh, kinship with like the greater mm. than human world, and totally like let's start to work on our. Pra we, practicing kinship with each other, with everything. We need to. We yeah. need to. I think our lives and the earth depends on it. Definitely. And people need to be more open to, like, discovering that within themselves and discovering how we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge believer in that, too. So I think it's great for all of us to kind of look inward mm -hmm. and see, like, how we can work with that within ourselves and with each other and, like, our relationships. Like, yeah, people don't just, like, teach that like you have to go and like find counsel to have healthy relationships Definitely. and stuff too so it's yeah. good that you know you're able to do that and you're able to put that in your music and just spread that message because as artists that's like one of the biggest gifts that you are giving mm. is that you have the chance to um, really talk about what's important mm. and for people to listen to that. And there's a lot of influence there. Mm. And when it's people that have good spirits and they're putting out good stuff like that, it's so powerful. Mm. And there's obviously people that are doing the opposite, which is really hard. But all you guys yeah. can do is, you know, do what you're doing and putting out that music with joy and with the power in your words. It's mm. like really special. So I just love, I just love the whole energy and vibe of what you guys do, what you're talking about. And even in the video, um, I really loved, was it the Earth Worship video where you even had like, and this is a whole nother question, but that little pink guy that you have that's yeah. on, like in the video, I yeah. think it's that one, right? Yes. And he's also on the album of, um, is it Survival Sounds? Yes. Uh, he was pooping out Earths in the music video, <laughs> which I like was obsessed with. But I'm also curious, like, who is this pink little flower man? Yes. And that was like a question I'm like, I have to ask him because he is so cute and yes. also confusing. But I love it so much. So what or can you say what that is? Yeah. Well, Vashti, well, Vashti is non-binary. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Okay, yes. got it, got it. <laughs> well, well, I didn't know it was Vashti. But yeah, Vashti. That makes I'm spitting. Oh my god, Vashti. <laughs> Vashti is like a character that we kind of co-create Mo more. Like, um, yeah, we we worked with an artist collective out of San Francisco to help us create Vashti way back in freaking yeah 2013 uh, or 14 to like around the Survival Sounds release, mm. and they had had like a statue, like a sculpture version of Vashi. And then we had, we commissioned them to create like a full wearable suit. And cool. it's, it came with the name Vashti. And we kind of, I don't know, it was like a symbol of in the carousel ride video, definitely yeah. just a symbol of like innocence and, and the child, child like yeah. spirit. And yeah, that joy comes back in. And, um, I, I feel like, yeah, the Vashti, okay. I, I <laughs> like really, um, didn't even have that word non-binary at the time. We yeah. were like, they're a gender-free. <laughs> what was that, 2014? Yeah. Yeah, so, so none of us really yeah. had that 
concept. Totally. The lingo is all coming. It's all catching but up. But I love that they're non-binary and their yes. name is Vashti. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's so, uh, yeah, because I wasn't clear of what exactly they were. Yeah. But I knew that I loved them. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I was so curious to understand kind of the story of how they came to be. But I can really see that, like the version of like the childhood, like the childhood version of ourselves or mm. of you. Is that kind of yeah. how it was coming out in the video and stuff? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so glad we brought Vashti back for Earth Worship. It was like Vashti's like, just been so in cool. storage, like in oh. our storage unit in a big suitcase. And we're like, you know what? We need to let them breathe a little bit. Oh, Vashti. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Is there someone that is actually in the suit? And all kinds, all, all different kinds people. of people. Yeah, okay. everyone. So <laughs> different people get to be Vashti yeah. for a little bit. I love that. Well, I'm glad I got to ask that because that was definitely a question I had. And I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of random, but it definitely um, stuck out to me when I saw them. Yeah. And I was like, I love them so much. We all need a little <laughs> Vashti of our own. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the version of us. So since you are, it seems like a spiritual person or a person that's interested in consciousness, mm -hmm. um, I am kind of curious because I am such an astrology nerd myself. Yeah. Um, are you, how into astrology are are you? Do you know your chart at all? I mean, this is something I just love to talk about, so I have to ask. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a little Leo. <gasps> yes. So I have to say the beret is very Leonian, and <laughs> yeah. also I have to mention that I also got my own beret. So yes. Thanks, Cap. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah. you're a Leo sun, and then yeah. do you know what your moon is? Or I'm rising? a Libra moon. Okay. Yes. Right. Sagittarius right, right. rising. Yeah. And Venus adventure. Virgo. Oh, wait, adventure? Oh, well, Sag is all about adventure. Ooh, cool. Yeah, so all Sages right. are all about, and I mean, really, this is kind of perfect because it's all yeah. about expanding the consciousness mm. and philosophy and travel and basically just seeing the world and experiencing different cultures from the world. Cool. So the fact I that, like, that, that, you know, the rising is all about your front door, what you're putting out there cool. in the world. And Leos are very much about, you know, it's perfect for a performer yeah. because they are very much yes. about being out there putting and they're very creative and yeah. have a lot to give and very generous too so oh, I good. feel like that makes sense Leo so Leo Sun um, Sag rising and then Libra moon you said yeah which is um, a beautiful Libra is such a beautiful sign it can definitely be one where that can be influenced by other people yes it can be hard to make your own decisions a little yeah, bit oh yeah yeah I, Alex is a Libra son so oh we're like yeah we you have that Libra that. connection yeah I love that well the fact that you know the big three is awesome and it's <laughs> I think and that, it yeah. definitely is just, you know, I think in LA, especially, we are very much into astrology. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're very into that. So thank you for indulging me in oh, that today. Thank you for this dropping some knowledge on me. No, I, I didn't know about the adventure thing. I thought, yeah, anyway, Sages are like, I, like um, independent or something? Is that a they thing? They are very well, independent. Well, I guess adventure, independent kind of goes together. They're very independent. And they, but again, it's like this thing of like absorbing knowledge. They like mm. want to understand things. That's cool. And be able to yeah. share that. So yeah. that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's what you guys are doing with your music is mm. you are working with what's going on in the world and you're sharing, you know, mm -hmm. different thoughts and feelings about it. So astrology always makes sense. It yeah. always, <laughs> it always, it always hits, fits in. Oh, yeah, fits nail on the head. Yeah. But anyways, well, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you for talking with me. It was such a delight to hear all your music live and everything. And I just hope you guys have a great rest of your tour and just keep spreading that great knowledge and just, you know, the joy most of all, just yeah. bringing that joy. So thank yeah. you again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>